Paper Cut. Hello, Paper Cut here, back with another replay review. This time we have Wabaki. Wabaki uh, was on my Twitch stream and redeemed some channel points to get a replay review. And usually I do those while streaming, but it was near the end of the stream, so I promised I'd do it off stream, make a video, and post it for him. So, uh, originally he wanted me to look at a fast castle attempt he made, but I don't remember which game that is, so Wabaki, I'm very sorry. Um, if you tell me, if you, sh if you give me a specific game in the comments of this video where you do Fast Castle, I will look at it and we can exchange private messages about what you could potentially do differently. So I described his most recent loss, which is against English on Cliffside. Now, before we hop into the game, man, uh, I used to play Ottoman a lot. And this was back, I think, two or three seasons ago. And English is a very tough matchup for Ottoman because Ottoman takes time to get going. And so any Sith that can kind of pressure them early has a really huge advantage. English longbow rush was always really, really tough. And it feels like often the best method to combat that as Ottoman is to do a fast castle. The way you do the fast castle is you do the Sultahani trade working landmark and you get full, you get it full. So you get the free gold, passive gold, and you get on the, a gold vein early. Get as much gold as you can, and then you just use the Sultanate Trade Network. Then you use Anatolian Hills to get a bunch of extra sheep, and then you use that sheep to rush castle. You try to get, um, what's it called, military schools up as you do that before you get kind of shut off, and then you rush castle and you try to either use men at arms or knights to push them back. Um, and also you can get that free mangonel, so you kind of hold to get the free mangonel, and then you just push back out. Hey. Um, a big thing for you then would be. Where can you wall to give yourself space? As well as, um, you'd probably want to try to mass archers or get Sapahi out to try to slow down, like Sapahi first and then archers to try to like slow down his push so he doesn't kill you before you hit castle. Um, but I'm curious what you end up doing here because it is a 30 minute game. If English ends up 2 TC, I feel like your best move is either to try to all in in feudal and attack the, t the second TC with Sapahi and archers, especially if you get your military schools up and pumping. I think the other option is fast castle into grabbing relics and then potentially then 2TC or you could 2TC yourself honestly 2TC Ottoman is pretty good if you can get to the castle uh, let's see what you do there's a sheep grab I like that you're not early military schooling um, I remember reading gosh I forget who posted this but someone did kind of ran the numbers and in general early military school is just not really worth it most of the time you think about it often as uh, Ottoman and feudal, you're not going to go Spearman anyway. You're going to go Archers in Sapahi, so getting a few free Archers early isn't really worth it because you might not upgrade them. I think the only time it might be worth doing early military schools against like French or JD, we're going to come at you early with Knights, so getting the Spearman out early is nice, but in this case, I don't really think it's that important. Um, I would still go to... I would, Twin Minaret's nice. I think Salta Honey Trade Thank Network, with, since the buffs, is actually better. Mostly because, hypothetically, gold can run out, as well as gold can be cut off. You can always add farms and live that way. So while the Twin Minaret's nice, you have the ability to get free sheep, and uh, you can always add farms some, at some point in the game. While gold can be cut off, and it's nice to always have that gold. And then, if you need to, you can actually pop those traders out and just trade with them if the opportunity shows up. So I just feel like the Salta Honey Trade Network is a little bit better right now. Okay, we really gotta check what he's doing at this point. I don't know why he aged for five. I don't know if there's a reason to rush it. I think four is fine. I mean, unless you're like, maybe you're low on food. Okay. You see Abbey King, so he's probably gonna go 2TC. You see him on stone. I'm interested. Are you gonna 2TC yourself? Are you going to Fast Castle? What's the move? What's the move? So it's like right now you're macroing towards some just military schools. Barracks drop for the king. So here's the thing I would say. If your plan is to go spot, if your plan is to actually fight him, then you just want to make Sapahi. Same thing with most Sips. If you can get like two or three horsemen out, you can fight his king, and especially with Sapahi, which are very, very strong. So if you don't want spears to be part of your comp, it's okay to open stables and just go Sapahi. Also gives you more raiding potential. Second TC is probably coming down right now. And then we're dropping our military schools. You have a lot on food. 
Here's the concern. Why are we so heavy on food? The reason I say this is, you obviously not need lots of stone and wood, right? Like, that's the thing you need. Either because you want to go second DC, or because you want to go military schools. And you're not really making a lot of units. You're making spears, sure, but like, they're not very food expensive. And look how much food you're banking. It's not like you can go castle because he's on your gold. Uh, maybe you want trying to save up food and then rush castle the second you push him off gold. I think it would have been more efficient to have like six on food and the rest on stone and wood to just even speed up that drop of military schools or second TC even more. So pay attention to your macro. If you don't really need food right now and you're trying to rush up something else, just don't be on food as heavy. Ooh, what do we got? Anatolian Hills. Yep, yep, yep. Makes sense. Military schools are down. I assume you grab the extra stone for the military schools you're gonna drop in the next ages. And you're really lucky you never checked your stone. And now you're right. Okay. So okay, I, I see the plan coming together now. Just trying to really fast castle with a lot on gold. Didn't lose the vill. Very nice. Pulled them back, which is good. Now raging up. About to say you want more than one. Now going to Sapahi. Honestly, I think I think your move is the second you age up, you go straight into men at arms and you do men at arms um, out of everything. You just do pure men at arms and siege if you're trying to do a quick push. And you want to get arrow defense. Wow, he's just white towering in the center. I think two villagers. That's nice. Next, uh, I think you have done a little bit more there, but we should not be that scared about White Tower on, on the center. And the reason being is because, like, you can still walk around it. You can even wall it off right here, and it's fine. It's honestly kind of a waste by him, because at this point his base is still very raidable. Like the point of doing the White Tower into two TC, two TC into White Tower, is he wanted he should have dropped the White Tower like here, so you can't raid him. I, in this case, seeing the White Tower here, this screams to me, base is very readable. So I would actually keep the military schools on Sapahi. I'd make men at arms out of my barracks. I'm going um, Sapahi, uh, Sapahi, uh, Sapahi, men at arms. I'd even probably drop a stable and upgrade my Sapahi. And then I, you have to just raid a Sapahi as much as possible. Like, he has seceded the defensive advantage by dropping his White Tower here. And your Sapahi can just raid like crazy in the back here. Um, I think that's your go-to, and then you'd want to get immediately Iron Under Mesh. Your Safahi can last under TCs if you have to raid under TC. But you didn't want to drop a tower or get off this gold, because he's going to be here. Yep. You need a tower both sides, though, if he has longbows. Why are we upgrading Spearmen? Oh, do you see he's going Knights? Good call then. But you don't really need spearmen, you need men at arms and janissaries. If you see spear if you see knights, just go janissaries. You don't need to do spearmen, just go janissaries. Like no one should run cavalry against you because janissaries are that good. Good catch on the monk. But you want to be drawn. Okay, now you're dropping on production. I would have wanted to drop a monastery at this point and try to get the relics yourself. Because this is kind of the stage where you both should be rushing relics and then kind of leaning more into a fight. But your lack of raiding here is really holding you back. I like how you keep I like that you keep the the armory on mangonels and just make counter weight trebuchet separate. Because you really do just want to get a mass of mangonels as much as possible. These Sapahi should not stay here, these Sapahi should raid. Like, you have the Sapahi sitting here, look at this. One, you're gonna let him get the relic. But two, he's on gold, on wood, on gold, on, like, all of this is completely unprotected, and a group of six, like a group of four, five, six Sapahi kill lots of villagers here. Like, this is very easily raidable, and that's one of the keys to beating English, is raiding their base and not letting them just sit here for free. That's why they're so hard to beat, because usually they drop the white tower like here, so it's really hard to raid. Since you dropped it here, it's, it's Raid City, baby. Like, you should just be in here all over the place. Okay, first Cheb. 
I would have just made more traps. Building um, battering rams is tough because you have to defend their battering rams when they come in, which would just probably mean they die. Um, instead, you'd either want a second trebuchet or start making your own spring bolts. What's so he doing? Um, because his natural thing is going to do start making spring bolts. You know. Yeah, makes sense. You see, so th this is a throw. Reason it's a throw is because you don't have the military to win under White Tower, and they're going to have the attack speed bonus for being under the White Tower. You are fine. Just be patient. Just be patient. You're making units. You're getting your free units. You have a bunch of wood, so now you can drop farms in the back here, and you should just be continuing the slow siege. But you're getting spring bolts, a second trebuchet. And more units. Instead, you're throwing your units away on this push that I don't think is going to work. And see, look, this was a this was a waste. We just lost all these units for nothing. And like, yes, he could have kept repairing with his villagers, but that's a that's a waste. He has that means he has villagers that are permanently assigned to just repairing the white tower and so they're not gathering resources and he's losing resources to repair yes it's wood but it's still resources so don't worry about it you should just keep building your your forces instead of throwing them away under white tower like that now he's gonna put traps can't let that happen oh he's just eating right now where's your own spring bolts? And this is why Sapahi Mask would be really good here. One, if you don't want any Spring Ults, a Sapahi Mask would come from this side and got right on top of the Spring Ults and destroyed them. The beautiful thing about Sapahis is that they're so hard to stop from getting to the Siege because their range is so big. But really, 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 the biggest issue is just the complete lack of rates with Sapahi. He has not walled, he has no defenses, he has a few towers, but so what? Like, the lack of rating is massive right now. And it's a really losing you this game because just playing him straight up like this is not the way to do it you also never match one spring ult you never made a horseman mass let's talk about eco macro here for a second so you've been consistent on making villagers what you haven't been consistent on is the spending of your resources or adjusting based on what your resources you have you have 2,000 wood so that means we are not looking at our resources and asking what do i have what do i need you ha you need gold which now you're going to but you could use stone or keep. You could use food for more units. And with this much wood, you should be dropping more production and dropping farms. At this point, you're already adding farms. I would have really liked if you had sent a unit over here to explore this side. Because you have all this wood. And you could, you could have walled off from here to here. And just started dropping farms. Or being on the berries or the deer here. And once again, it's kind of a waste. That you have all this wood and you're not using it. At worst, you could have dropped a uh, market and sold all the wood. For gold. Um, but what really hurts is that you let him get all the relics. And it wasn't like he beat you to castle really hard. You guys get the castle at the same time with the same units. You just never pick them up. So now he's getting uh, a lot of free gold and you're not. So he's 2TC and getting free gold. You're on 55. He's on 92. And basically the problem is is if you, got, if you go 1TC and he goes 2TC and you both reach castle at the same time, that should mean you have units and that you can attack immediately and he doesn't. And the way you win that is either you have to raid and do damage and then either go 2TC yourself or keep the pressure on so he never gets that build lead. You didn't apply any pressure and then you didn't uh, and then you you didn't uh, go 2TC yourself. So the question, so like the thought process here is I have gone fast castle, my opponent's gone 2TC into fast castle. How do I get my advantage track? What can I do? I can get relics, I can go 2TC myself, I can raid. How do you set those things up? Do you drop extra stables to get more Sapahi? You drop a Mosque Amelia and guard it with Men-at-Arms? Like, what are we doing to get those things? Because if you never do anything, you're just going to eventually fall behind and lose. It's like asking yourself, what do I need to win? And what do my opponent's actions mean? He has gone White Tower into pure infantry and siege. It means he's very slow, so it means that you can go raid his, back, his, his base. Um, it's just asking yourself, like, what do I need to get back in the game? Because let's let's say you were 2TC and he was 1TC, then I'd say, okay, just sit here and keep adding units, keep making farms, because you have more villagers and your eco's going to take over. Like, his goal is to sit here and wait you out. Your goal needs to be more aggressive, but you're playing into him by doing this very slow siege play, this very slow back and forth.
And now we raid, but it's, it's very late. And you're raiding with one knight. Like, seven supply, he tear through his base. You also have no military upgrades. This is also, if he ever does a white tower, a very legitimate option is to rush, it's just to rush castle. I mean, rush him. Your two great bombards fix everything. Um, because great bombard, bombards are still very good. Second, this is why it's nice to, like, once you enter castle, especially on cliff side. Sorry, I realize I'm not in front of the mic. Um, a nice thing to do on cliff side when you hit castle is to immediately get a group of villagers on stone. Because the easiest way to help secure this game is to start keeping the stone. Look what he's doing. He's walling you off. He's dropping keeps on gold. And so now he's going to completely cut you off from resources, and that's going to be game over. And you... At one point, gathered like 2,000 wood, which could have been stone, uh, for keeps to secure future gold sites. I don't know why he ran. Oh, I guess his, his units would have gone right. Once again, all we needed was two to three trubs. Impatience. It's not right, you have to imp. Yeah, his Imacron is way better than yours. Look at this. Look at the income per minute. That dog, don't hunt. That will not work. And your free units are nice, but it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, he's almost a 200 pop. And he can produce forever. And now he's up this Berkshire in his base, so now his base is safe. So yeah. Overall, what can we learn from this? First, you have to adjust your strategy based on the things you are doing your opponent's doing. So if you want a fast castle because your opponent's 2TC, great. But the purpose of the fast castle is to then get something from it. Your fast castle is a little slower because you want to do the military schools first. That's fine. But that means you're getting units, and you need to use the units on something. To me, the checklist, if you fast castle against someone who is 2TC... Your checklist pretty straightforward. Raid, get relics, and then either all in or go 2TC match and play from there. He, you, he, and so following that roadmap's really key. Then you want to start doing things like adding stone walls, securing uh, resources with, with keeps, things like that. And then using your opponent's decisions to his advantage. So if he had dropped White Tower in the base, that allows you to secure more space with walls and keeps and things like that. If he drops a white tower in the center of the map, that just means his base is extremely raidable and you have one of the best raiding units in the game in Sapahi. So use them. Um, and then have a comp that matches that, which is why uh, Janissaries and Sapahi are really good. Men at Arms, Sapahi, and Siege are really good. Uh, and use those to your advantage. And I think it would have gotten a lot better instead of doing this like slow siege war. And finally, never, ever, ever fight under the white tower. Only time you should ever fight under the white tower is if you have already fought before. And, you're, and you just wiped him with all your units, and then, uh, and then at that point you win. It's a lot of springles. Um, yeah, and then like you only fight under the white towers you've already won a fight, and then you're like pushing him, and you and you can just rush the white tower and burn it down. Um, hope, overall, I hope that was really helpful to you. If you're interested in more support, check out my coaching Discord. If you're interested in your own replay review and you're watching this. Uh, message me on Discord with the description will be under the video and uh, good luck on your games.